before we proceed on our discussion, let me show you our objectives. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to state remainder theorem, state factor theorem, solve the remainder using remainder theorem, solve the remainder using synthetic division, and determine if a polynomial is a factor of another polynomial. Let's get started. Remainder theorem. Remainder theorem states that if the polynomial p of x is divided by x minus r, the remainder r is a constant and equal to p of r. In symbol, we have r is equal to p of r. How to find the remainder? To find the remainder when p of x is divided by x minus r, we can use the remainder theorem or synthetic division. Let's have an example. Find the remainder when 5x squared minus 2x plus 1 is divided by x plus 2. First, we need to identify our p of x and that is our dividend. And the divisor should be in the form x minus r. We need to find the value of x in the divisor. So first, we need to equate our divisor to 0, then transpose 2 on the other side of the equation, and our x is equal to negative 2. After that, we can now write our p of x and substitute the value of x, which is negative 2. The resulting equation is p of negative 2 is equal to 5 times negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 1. Then we can now solve. Let's start with exponent. Negative 2 squared is equal to 4. So the resulting equation is p of negative 2 is equal to 5 times 4 minus 2 times negative 2 plus 1. Then let's proceed with multiplication. 5 times 4 is equal to 20. Negative 2 times negative 2 is equal to positive 4. So we have 20 plus 4 plus 1. Then we will solve 20 plus 4 plus 1 is equal to 25, which means that our p of negative 2 is equal to 25, or the remainder is simply 25. Let's see if we can get the same answer using the process of synthetic division. First, we need to identify our dividend, and that is 5x squared minus 2x plus 1, and our divisor x plus 2. Then we can now start with step 1. Arrange the coefficients of dividend in descending powers of x. For the quadratic term, we have 5. For the linear term, we have negative 2. And the constant term, 1. Then, place the value of r in the upper left corner. So we have x plus 2 is equal to 0, transpose 2, that means our x is equal to negative 2. Next step is to bring down the first coefficient. In this example, we have 5. Step number 4, multiply the r by the third row to find the second row. Negative 2 times 5 is equal to negative 10. Step number 5, add the first and and second row to get the third row. Negative 2 plus negative 10 is equal to negative 12. Step number 6, repeat the procedure for step 4 and 5 until the last number in the third row is obtained. So we have negative 2 times negative 12 is equal to positive 24. 1 plus 24 is equal to 25 which means that our last number in the third row, which is 25, is our remainder. Now that we are done using remainder theorem and synthetic division, we can conclude that our remainder is 25. Let's have another example. Find the remainder when p of x is equal to 2x raised to the fourth plus 5x cubed plus 2x squared minus 7x minus 15 is divided by 2x minus 3. We need to equate our divisor with 0, then find the value of x. 
transpose negative 3 so we have 2x is equal to 3 then divide both sides by 2 to cancel 2 on the left side of the equation so th therefore our x is equal to 3 half we can now write our p of x and substitute the value of x which is 3 half so the resulting equation is p of 3 half is equal to 2 times 3 half raised to the fourth plus 5 times 3 half cubed plus 2 times 3 half squared minus 7 times 3 half minus 15. We can now solve it using the process of PEMDAS starting with exponent. 3 half raised to the fourth is equal to 81 over 16 since 3 raised to the fourth is equal to 81 and 2 raised to the fourth is equal to 16. 3 half cube is equal to 27 over 8 since 3 cube is equal to 27 and 2 cube is equal to 8 plus 2 then 3 half squared is equal to 9 over 4 since 3 squared is equal to 9 and 2 squared is equal to 4 then bring down negative 7 times 3 half minus 15 then next step is multiplication 2 times 81 over 16 is equal to 162 divided by 16. 2 times 81 is 162. Copy the denominator 16. Multiply the numerator. 5 times 27 is equal to 135. Copy the, den the denominator 8. Then 2 times 9 fourth is equal to 18 over 4. Since 2 times 9 is 18, over the denominator 4. Negative 7 times 3 half is equal to negative 21 over 2 minus 15. Then we can now proceed with division. 162 divided by 16 is equal to 10.125. 135 divided by 8 is equal to 16.875. 18 divided by 4 is equal to to 4.5 negative 21 divided by 2 is equal to negative 10.5 bring down negative 15 to solve this we can use calculator or solve it manually 10.125 plus 16.875 plus 4.5 minus 10.5 minus 15 is equal to 6 which means that our remainder 6 to check if our answer is correct, we can use synthetic division. First, we need to identify our dividend and our divisor. Then, we can now proceed with the step 1. And that is to arrange the coefficients of dividend in descending powers of x. So, we have 2, then 5, positive 2 for the quadratic term, negative 7, for the linear and negative 15 for the constant term. Next step is to place the value of r in the upper left corner. We need to equate 2x minus 3 with 0. Then transpose negative 3. Divide both sides by 2. So we have x is equal to 3 half. Next step is to bring down the first coefficient. In this example, we have 2. Then multiply the r by the third row to find the second row. 3 half times 2 is equal to 3. Step number 5, add the first and second row to get the third row. 5 plus 3 is equal to 8. Then repeat the procedure for step 4 and 5 until the last number in the third row is obtained. 3 half times 8 is equal to 12. Then 2 plus 12 is equal to 14. Then 3 half times 14 is equal to 21. Then negative 7 plus 21 is equal to 14. Then 3 half times 14 is equal to 21. And for the last step, negative 15 plus 21 is equal to 6. Therefore, we can conclude using the remainder theorem and the synthetic division that our remainder is 6. Sometimes, the remainder when p of x is divided by x minus r is equal to 0. 
This idea is illustrated by the factor theorem. Factor theorem states that a polynomial P of X has X minus R as a factor if and only if P of R is equal to zero. There are two parts of the proof of the factor theorem, namely, if x minus r is a factor of p of x, then p of r is equal to 0. And p of r is equal to 0, then x minus r is a factor of p of x. Let us see how the factor theorem is used in the following examples. Example number 1, show that x minus 1 is a factor of 3x cubed minus 8x squared plus 3x plus 2. We need to equate first our divisor with 0. Then, we, we will transform negative 1 on the other side of the equation. So, we have x is equal to 1. Then, we can now write our p of x and substitute the value of x, which is 1. So, we have p of 1 is equal to 3 times 1 cubed minus 8 times 1 squared plus 3 times 1 plus 2. Then we can now solve starting with exponent. 1 cubed is equal to 1. 1 squared is also equal to 1. Then we can now proceed with multiplication. 3 times 1 is equal to 3. Negative 8 times 1 is equal to negative 8. 3 times 1 is 3. So the resulting equation is p of 1 is equal to 3 minus 8 plus 3 plus 2. To solve for the last step, we have 3 minus 8 plus 3 plus 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, our remainder is 0. Since p of 1 is equal to 0, then x minus 1 is a factor of 3x cubed minus 8x squared plus 3x plus 2. Let's take another example, but this time we need to find the value of k for which the binomial x plus 4 is a factor of x raised to the fourth plus kx cubed minus 4x squared. x plus 4 is a factor of x raised to the fourth plus kx cubed minus 4x squared if p of negative 4 is equal to 0. First, we need to write our p of x and equate it with 0. Then, we can now substitute the value of x, which is negative 4. Then, to solve this, we need to use the PEMDAS rule starting with the exponent. So, negative 4 raised to the 4th is equal to 256 plus k negative 4 cubed is equal to negative 64 minus 4 negative 4 squared is equal to positive 16 equal to 0. Then we can now proceed with multiplication. Bring down 256, k times negative 64 is equal to negative 64k. Negative 4 times 16 is equal to negative 64. Then we can now solve this, bring down negative 64k and transpose 256, it would become negative 256 and transpose negative 64, it will become positive 64. Then we can now solve negative 256 plus 64 is equal to negative 192. Divide both sides by negative 64. So we can cancel negative 64 on the left side of the equation. And negative 192 divided by negative 64 is equal to 3. Therefore, our k is equal to 3 which means that the value of k for which the binomial x plus 4 is a factor of x raised to the fourth plus k cubed minus 4x squared is 3.